from the wiring. The electrician's running a uh, running cable right now. To the window installation. These are the amazing framers. Uh, they work with Chema Hernandez out of Denver. All this construction. As soon as I had a set of drawings, I got a contractor and I moved forward quickly. Is a site for sore eyes in Superior. Great view of the Rockies. Because getting here for Jason Serbu and countless other fire survivors has been no walk in the park. So many people realized that they were underinsured. I think the challenge is that cleanup took as long as it did. When the Marshall Fire ripped through Boulder County December 30th of last year. We just saw fire. You need to evacuate if you have the means to evacuate. The destruction was mind boggling. Pretty well knew it was just going to be soot. I could see flames and I could see flames in my backyard. I knew I had to get out. Then there was the mind numbing bureaucracy and red tape around recovery. This is going to be an awfully difficult recovery. From under insurance heartache. No one should have ever written such a badly underfunded policy. To green building code concerns. I think it's horribly insensitive for city government to believe that this is acceptable. From debris removal delays. I think people are very confused about what's going on and what's next. To perhaps one of the biggest hurdles for some homeowners, sky high use taxes on construction materials. Rebate our use taxes. While Superior moved quickly to waive use taxes, Louisville and Boulder County seemingly dragged their feet. If people really wanted something to happen, they could have done it and they could have done it quickly. Use taxes got to go. It even led to a protest in Louisville this past summer. Fire survivors demanding the city follow Superior's lead and waive the thousands of dollars in use taxes homeowners would have to pay to rebuild. Either council can do something and pass uh, an ordinance to rebate them, or we can go to the voters ourselves directly. Let's break down use taxes for a moment. In the most basic terms, it's a sales tax on construction materials like lumber, drywall, and carpet. In Louisville, for example, the use tax is 3.6% on new construction. So if a fire survivor is rebuilding a home for $700,000, that's about $25,000 in use taxes. Sales and use, I think it's, it's definitely interchangeable. Um, when it comes to rebuilding a house, we call it use tax only because of when the tax is paid. Whether it's visitors just in town for a few days of vacation, or someone moving to Colorado for the first time. Everybody wants to be here. Our state gets no shortage of love. My body runs better on high altitude. Can we work outside? Can we have coffee outside? Can we do everything outside? But are we loving it to death? Humans historically always love places to death. I-70 is a, it's a nightmare, in my opinion. Quality of life is uh, tough. It's hard to achieve that for a lot of folks right now. Let's go 360 on how Colorado is changing with experts who say it's a wonderful destination, but also warn of climate change inequities and other quality of life issues. Those who moved here because they think it's so great, those visiting. And let's start with Sandy and Rich Gerber, who lived in Colorado for 40 years. Quality of life, um, school systems for the kids. Um, she spent 35 years with the city of Aurora. But now, like so many of their friends, they recently left Colorado, moving to the Phoenix area for warmer winters and a lower cost of living. We sold the house in 13 days and had a house down there. Yeah, it was a bargain. It was time to just change. Then there are those like Patty De Rosario. The people are nice, the, especially the ones who have lived here forever. She and her military husband bounced around the world for years before settling back in Colorado about five years ago. Oh my gosh, our house is appreciated, I think 50%. There's something for everyone. The only thing that we're missing is a beach. I don't think we'll ever move. Dr. Lauren Gifford agrees. There are so many things that make Colorado attractive. There's a lot of smart people. Yes. There's a lot of smart women. But Gifford, an expert in climate policy, says climate change and increasing population threaten quality of life in Colorado. So like what we saw here in Louisville, uh, where we had a mega urban wildfire where a thousand homes were lost. It's mind boggling, it's traumatic. There's incredible lasting trauma here. You know, I would say that a thousand homes burned is already the implosion. She says there's no way to solve climate change, but one glaring missed opportunity is funding mass transit. 
there's ways to adapt to climate change. There's ways to be resilient to climate change. But we're not solving it at this point. Christmas decorations still hang outside Sabrina Jones' home. Christmas tree is still up, lights are still in the window. All for her only daughter, Lashea, who loved the holidays, parties, and decorating. I left them up because if Lashea was here, they would still be up. They would still be there until she was ready to take them down. Lashea Stein was a straight-A student at George Washington High School. She adored her five brothers, especially the littlest one. This is the most updated photo of what she'd look like now. In July of 2016, Lashea left her mom's Aurora house at 2 in the morning. This is the last known video showing her walking down the street. You really want to know what I think? I think that whatever situation she was in, it, I think it was bad. I think that, I do believe that Lachea was being trafficked. The last credible tip came a couple years ago that Lachea was spotted at a hotel along East Colfax. And ever since, nothing. And it wasn't for lack of effort by Aurora police. They've searched and made pleas. In November of 2020, the FBI scoured a house on Lansing Street in Aurora for three days and nothing. It used to be I'd be so afraid for somebody to tell me that she was deceased, but now it's, I'm at this point now where whatever it is, please, somebody just help me find out what happened to her. The entire town is under evacuation orders. I mean, it is a very serious situation. It feels like Armageddon out here. The fire is not marked. We can confirm we've seen multiple homes catch on fire. This is something that most most of us have never seen. And, uh, you know, I've been a cop a long time, and I haven't seen one this big in, in this area. And I'm, I'm from this area. I was born and raised in this area. For those who are directly affected, know that you don't stand alone. The people of Colorado stand with you. Hard to, you know, come home at the end of the day and know that you lost a thousand houses and, you know, feel like you did a good job. We moved into a hotel to celebrate my birthday. The hotel looked like one right out of a movie. The long front desk with the sad front desk worker. Just then, Alex put her arm around me and whispered, we are in this together. And at that moment, I saw hope that everything was going to be okay. It could only got better from there. At least we have each other. I can't believe that it's almost a year and that the lot looks like this. I expected to be farther along. Without the friends and family and community, we probably wouldn't be rebuilding. I'm back here every day. And you get excited. Then you start getting impatient. I want to come back here. This is home. It's fairly clear within just a few minutes of meeting Keith Reed. Well, the bicycle brings me joy. Where he stands on transportation and infrastructure issues. We're down here on the creek because up in front of your station, there was too much car noise. We couldn't conduct this interview. He is not a fan of how much emphasis we place on car culture in America and in Colorado. If you need to use a bus or a sidewalk when it happens to be snowing, you can forget it. Your life has no value. Six lanes of car traffic that's wide open because all the snow is piled on the sidewalk and covering up the bus stop. I mean, where's the humanity in that? He certainly has good reason to be critical. She was a nurse at the local hospital and hopelessly overwhelmed, as all nurses are. He lost his wife of 40 years to a car crash in Oklahoma before moving to Colorado. She was leaving her job uh, one evening and, and uh, trying to cross the street and got ran over and killed. It is a sensitive issue, and there are certainly no shortage of opinions about transportation and infrastructure in Colorado. Realistically, does everybody need their car? In Denver, Ozone is, you know, invisible poison that we breathe in on hot days in the summer. And at the micro-mobility level in certain neighborhoods. Cars are, are killing our neighborhoods and they're affecting our most vulnerable communities. Let's start there with Nick Glenn in Montbello, where transportation is more than cars and bikes. It's a lifeline. Get to work, to get to school to get food to feed their family. Because of the fact that many here can't afford cars, bikes are often impractical when the weather is bad and buses and trains don't go everywhere, Glenn started a micro shuttle service to fill the gaps and it has been a huge success. 
It's truly working. They can go to work, uh, go to school and things like that. But that success is tempered by deep-seated, historic and often racial transportation issues. For me, there's always been a disconnect between those who have choices and those who do not. Angie Rivera Malpiade was the first ever Latina board president for RTD. Problem is, she's still the only one. On the RTD board of directors, I'm the only Latina. We really need more people of color. They are talking about the needs of the community. In the La Alma Lincoln Park neighborhood south of downtown. I've been teaching bicycle mechanics here for 18 years now. Mac Lyman is the program lead at Bikes Together. We've built a lot of infrastructure that makes cars seem easy and convenient, but there's, there's nothing inherently easy or convenient about cars. We've just made it that way. Out on the street. I love being outside. I love being active and I love not being in my car. Kendra Black might just be the biggest advocate on the Denver City Council for better mobility options. I am an advocate for all kinds of mobility improvements, safety improvements for pedestrians, cyclists, people in wheelchairs, people with strollers, disabled people. She even fought off people in her own affluent Southwest Denver neighborhood to put bike lanes in the place of parking spots. And a lot of people were very unhappy because it took away their parking. We have big driveways. People don't need to park in the street. We have plenty of parking. Black is also an advocate for other forms of transit and better bus stops. We need to be doing a lot more. One thing Denver does seem to be getting right are the e-bike rebates. The rebate is fantastic. The city has made headlines around the world for offering rebates ranging anywhere from $400 up to $1,200 for certain income qualified buyers. Plus, you get the rebate at point of sale not later in the mail. Emily Kleinfelter hasn't traded in her car just yet, but with her new fatty bike, she believes it's now more than ever a real possibility. Having a local shop where I can get maintenance done is, is definitely a great incentive. Our annual cost of owning a vehicle is something around like $8,000 a year. Compare that to the e-bike she just bought, which cost about $2,000 after rebates. Yeah, it wasn't the cheapest bike out there, but it's an investment for me. It's going to replace my car. And that brings us back it just, to Keith Reed. It's the definition of insanity that I should have to stand here talking to you about the importance of, of her life or my life or that person over there that's walking down the sidewalk's life or anyone else's life just because they're not in a in a car. What most do seem to agree on is a mix of transit solutions. People want other options to get around their city. What I find to be the most difficult part of biking in Denver is um, is cars. I love cars actually. Uh, I love classic cars. I love going to car shows so cars don't suck but uh, what they do to the environment sucks. Even the very best of what Denver has to offer is just a small fraction of what's possible. Russell Haythorn, Denver 7.